Greetings, fellow Roto Ballers. Welcome back. It is the week for the checkdown. My name is Joey Christopoulos, my tutty guy, Dave Rispoli. This is the episode that gives you all your favorite QB starts and sits and tight end starts and sits for week four. Dave, in week three, we hit on Stafford, we hit on Cousins, we hit on Darnold, we hit on Andrews, we hit on Logan Thomas, we hit no on Jared Cook, and then Justin Fields, Dave? You know, Joe, you can't win them all, Joey. Okay, look, if we were in baseball, we'd be, we'd be, you know, top of the league and hitting. We said streaming. <laughs> no, we, said- we, we said pick them up on waivers, and someone in the comments said, you guys are a bunch of homers, and we we're like, you don't know anything. Look well... There egg on our homer face right Everybody back up just back up for a second here back up we're getting backed up to the wall here and we didn't say anything about starting matt Nagy. by the way uh this episode of bringing up matt Nagy is brought to you by linkedin <laughs> update your account today matt Nagy, because you might be using linkedin coming up soon dave but it's time to dive into week four's qb starts and sits dave i'm gonna hit it right off the bat with a guy that we hit last week and we're gonna rock him again it's matt stafford Matt Stafford against the Cardinals. Look, I think this matchup is ripe for anybody to play against the Cardinals. But Matt Stafford, you got to play this dude every single week at this point. 942 passing yards through three games, nine touchdowns, one interception so far. The cards, their matchup numbers are kind of up and down a little bit. It's hard to see whether they're a bad or a good defense. But Kirk Cousins ripped him up for 244 and three touchdowns in week two. So I'm rolling with Matt Stafford again, Dave. Who do you got for your QB start this week in week four? We haven't seen tonight's game. So again, time stamping this. It is Monday morning. We're trying to get this in early for you, Sean. And uh, I'm going to go with Jalen Hurts. Barring anything crazy happening tonight in tonight's game, this could look totally ridiculous or could look genius, either one. But he's playing the Chiefs. Look at, look, I say look at what Lamar did to the Chiefs. Rush for 107 and two tutties, threw for 239 and one. Now, I'm not saying Jalen Hurts is Lamar Jackson, but it's clearly that they, this is a team that struggles with the mobile quarterback. We'll see what he does tonight. But if the Eagles can escape healthy, I'm starting Jalen Hurts versus the Chiefs. I think it's a good call, regardless of what he does against Dallas tonight, as long as he has two legs and two arms and head on top of his shoulders next week against a KC defense that struggled all year. I like that move a whole lot. Moving on to my next QB start, I'm going to go with Baker Mayfield versus Minnesota. And here's the deal. You know, Baker maybe hasn't necessarily lit up the fantasy world, but I do like him as a start this week because the Minnesota Vikings have allowed 261, 400, and 298 passing yards to their first three QBs, six passing, one rushing. Cleveland Browns, courtesy of the Chicago Bears, are feeling pretty good this week, heading into next week. Baker Mayfield, one more week with Odell Beckham in the mix. Maybe that passing game gets going a little bit more. Austin Hooper got involved, too, as well. I like Baker Mayfield as a start, Dave. Yeah, and look, Baker Mayfield has suddenly become a staple of the show, both good and bad, right? Week one, we said he was a start. Panned out. Week two, we said he was a sit. Pretty much panned out. So, uh, you know, Baker, welcome to the check down, my man. This week, you're a start for us. I love the call, Joe. Odell Beckham looked pretty darn good. He might be back to his old self. Who needs Jarvis Landry when you have Odell Beckham still and tons of other receiving options. And Minnesota has given the opposing quarterback their best performance of the year, both in Burrow and Kyler Murray. So I'm expecting maybe the best performance of Baker Mayfield's year so far in week four. And Dave, remember, Baker came to us as an actor first. That's right. He came to us as a theater actor first on the stage, cutting his teeth, and now he's a fantasy player and performer, and we're so proud to have him on the check down in week four. Dave, uh, it might be time to move over to our sits, QB sits. Do you want to go first, my friend? Who do you got as your QB sit in week four? Yeah, this one's a slam dunk for me. Daniel Jones was never believing the hype. Still don't believe the hype. He fooled you into thinking he was good at fantasy football because of his huge rushing days in week one and week two. But then we got to see the Daniel Jones we all know and love, Joey, in week three, missing throws, looking utterly confused. And now he gets the Saints, who have given opposing quarterbacks lots of trouble. No, thank you. Do you believe in hype? I say no when it comes to Daniel Jones. I'm right there with you. Saints, six interceptions for the, the first three games. I think he's kind of doing it with smoke and mirrors a little bit. And, yeah, like you said, picking up that garbage yard, rushing TD. Is he going to get that every single week? I just think he's a sit for sure this week in week four. And I'm going to go with another guy in week four, Derek Carr versus the Chargers. A lot of people are going to be talking about the Raiders this week. Can they move to 4-0? The Chargers just proved that they might be for real this season by beating a Kansas City Chiefs team and picking off Patrick Mahomes twice. 
I think this is one of those riding high moments. Dave, the Mascara Man has been on the check down many, many a time. He's a staple. Thank you for watching. If you remember this, and this is what Derek Carr does, he gets you rocking, he gets you rolling, and then we come on the check down. We get all the rotor ballers all oiled up and be like, start their car, baby. Well, I think this might be the year where he actually takes a step back. I think Derek Carr is a sit versus the Chargers. Dave, I want to ask you a question before we get out of our quarterbacks. Shoot, Joe. In terms of streaming right now, in terms of tournament play, in terms of really honestly standard format leagues, heading into week four, are you starting any of these rookie quarterbacks? Hmm. No. That is correct. That yeah. is correct, Dave. And you know yeah. what? We don't need stats to put it out there. Anyone, you know, if you're a novice, if you're an expert, just leave these fantasy rookie quarterbacks alone. I, it's a dynasty stash, baby. Mm -hmm. Moving on to tight ends, Joey. Let's get excited. I'm excited about this guy. Welcome to the check down for the first time. I don't know if we ever even talked about him last year or in any other previous iterations of the check down, Joey. But who do you have as your tight end? start spoiler alert he's currently the tight end six tight end is a disaster what do you got joe i don't know he also sounds like he's currently an actor on a wb series it's dawson knox ladies and gentlemen he's dawson. the bad yeah the bad boy in the hallways right he's kind of pulling you away from maybe the leads love interest why we like him 43 yards in a tutty this last week we liked him a whole lot last week we like him even more this week against the houston texans team that's a lot at least 40 receiving yards to three different tight ends this year look that's a floor that we can easily attain to again when we bring up these tight end start sits look you're still automatically you're starting your wallers your kelseys you're starting you know maybe george kittle's back in that conversation after the talk that we had last week but we're trying to find some people here that are at least gonna get you a solid number we're not saying this dude's gonna go nuts but i do like dawson knox's floor as a start this week against the texans dave who else you got for uh tight end starts in week four this is a guy who burned us in week two because we recommended him as a start, but I still believe in him. Tyler Higby. It's been an absolute roller coaster. Week one, balled out, had the highest snap percentage of any tight end. Week two, one catch. What the heck's going on? Week three, balls out. Will the real Tyler Higby please stand up? Okay. I think it's more of week one and week three. Because of his usage, not just he's not just a, a tight end, Joey. They're they're using him in wide receiver screens. Sorry, Robert Woods fans. Tyler Higby seemed like the number two. It's like cup, 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 Higby, and then sprinkling in Robert Woods. Uh, I feel your pain though. I'm a Robert Woods owner. I say start Tyler Higby against the Cardinals. And finally, look, this is a guy who we're adding into the every week start list. We, he was a start last week, Logan Thomas. Same reasons still apply, right? High floor, always has touchdown upside. Fell in the end zone, maybe he does again. That's what you're looking for in a tight end. And as the beautiful leaves fall off the tree and we head into autumn, we get the chance to say here on the check down, the Atlanta Falcons defense sucks. They do. It's they so, bad. It's so bad. And we're going to be hammering that in the weeks to come. You guys just keep an eye out there, especially maybe in another boom and bust video that we're going to be doing for Rotoballer this week. Make sure you check that out. And just my final point on Higby with you real quick. You know, we're pairing him with Stafford, right? They're starting to move Deshaun Jackson into the mix. You know, you got Cup, you got Woods. They're really starting to kind of like bring out the entire dining set, if you will, of all the different toys that he can play with. So that puts Higby right in there. Dave, it's time for QB uh, tight end sits here. This has been our uh, our most favorite uncomfortable segment that we could possibly do because it's just been, it's it continues to be so bad, Dave. And then, you know, people are asking us a lot of these wonderful, beautiful comments and questions below. We're trying to do the best we can to find these tight end starts and sits but there's just so many sits out there it's it's intense yeah we, we won't make sean run the list again watch previous episodes there's a lot of names on that list this next tight end joe is a guy who finished this week as the tight end one not a tight end one joey hashtag tight ends are the worst this guy finished as the number one overall tight end and yet you're telling the people to sit him why joey because the Vikings boat's been a rockin' and I can't be a Conklin. No, <laughs> no, not yet. Buddy, it's okay. You got a full week to get into form, okay? His name is Tyler Conklin. Sounds like something in my lower back that I'm dealing with right now is an issue. But yeah, look, he put up seven for 70 and a touch uh, last week against, you know, last week in this Vikings game and the win against the Seahawks. 
I'm just not buying it. He just basically eclipsed the receptions and yard solo that he put together combined in the first two games. And now they're playing the Browns next week. You know, I, I like this whole Vikings offense is going great. It's humming. I do see maybe a step, small step back for the for them against the Browns next week. You know, Matt Alexander Madison, he had a great game, but it's Delvin Cook play this week. Kirk Cousins, you know, he's rocking and rolling, but you know, playing this Cleveland defense, they just got nine sacks against the Bears, four and a half for Miles Garrett alone. I just don't like the matchup. I especially don't like Tyler Conklin all of a sudden becoming, you know, a weekly play. I think he takes that step back after flashing in week three. He's a sit for me. Your sit uh, tight end sit for week four. Evan Ingram, and this one's easy, Joe. Simple, okay? Giants offense looks bad. Saints defense looks legit. How's that for fantasy analysis, everybody? I say Ingram is not ready to be in your lineups yet. He's a bench for me. He's a wait and see how things shake out. There's also just suddenly a lot of clutter in the Giants passing game. One week it's Shepard. The other week it's Galladay, Slayton. Uh, Barkley is getting targeted like crazy again. I just don't know if there's enough of this pie I want, let alone to go around to Evan Ingram. Yeah, he made it back. Only two receptions for 21 yards last week. Does that necessarily engender a lot of enthusiasm heading next week into a tough matchup? I say no. Dave, you say no. And Dave, you know, I think that's going to pretty much do it for our quarterback starts and sits, tight end starts and sits week four. We're starting to kind of feel out some of these defense a little bit, starting to get together some a little bit of the trends. So thank you so much for watching this episode of the Check Down Week 4. Hey, everybody. You guys have been doing such a great job with your comments and questions. You guys have not only been watching on a weekly basis, been coming back the week after and adding more comments and questions. Look, that's what our job is. That's why we're doing these videos, to help you guys win your league. So please make sure you drop that comment down there on the bottom. Dave, at Teddy Guy on his socials. Me, at Joey Sports Guy on my socials. Dave, any final words before we head into Week 4? No, I'm just excited for everyone to go win that league. It was a rocky week one through three, but strap in everybody. Week four is when the cream starts to rise to the top. Yes, and make sure if you're on that roller coaster and you fall off, don't you fall down and break your Conklin. Don't you do <laughs> a, fractured, a fractured Conklin. Don't make it happen. Uh, just thank you so much for checking out this video, you guys. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for leaving your comments and questions in advance and liking this video, subscribing to Roto Baller videos in general. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. My name is Joe Christopoulos, Dave Raspoli. Go win that league, everybody. <laughs>